So over the last few years, I've talked about Kanto quite a bit. For the most annoying Pokemon, ranking the gym leaders, and of course, all of the possible best teams for Kanto. We've had Remix on top of Remix, and Mistakes on top of Mistakes made of the best team series, but it's always revolved around trying to find the best Pokemon in Kanto and putting them on a team. But things sometimes get in the way of picking up the truly best Pokemon in Kanto. Whether it's version exclusivity, being trade evolutions, or just being good in the unconventional sense for a playthrough. That's why today, I'm bringing you my list of the best Pokemon for Kanto. In my opinion, of course. Now this list won't be in any particular order, and won't have to abide by the rules we put into place for a best team. You won't be seeing the starters because A, they're not the best in the game, and B, they're Pokemon anyone can expect on the list. Of course, there will be Pokemon that you can expect on this list from everything you've seen in the best team series, but there will actually be a decent amount of Pokemon that for some reason or another haven't made it onto a best team. For now though, I'll quit rambling and just dive right into these powerful Kanto Pokemon. So to start off this list, we have the best flyer for all the Kanto games being Dodrio. Now Dodrio might not be the most diverse Pokemon in the world in what it can go up against, but for what it can do right, it really does right. It has mediocre stats for the most part, but it does have a really solid 110 attack and 100 speed. More often than not, it's going to hit its target first, and it's going to hit hard. Now being a normal one flying type, you're only going to be hitting grass, bug, and fighting types for super effective damage for the most part, and there are much better Pokemon out there that can handle those jobs. So so why is it on this list? Well, as I stated in the beginning of this entry, it is the best flyer in any of the Kanto games, and you cannot consider a Kanto playthrough without this means of transportation. That's not the only thing that makes it good though, of course. Having stab boosted moves like Drill Peck, Return and Try Attack, in addition to Fly, is great. But again, there are better Pokemon out there, which is why I thought I'd talk about Dodrio first. So next up, we have two very popular Fire-type Pokemon, being Arcanine and Ninetales. These two have appeared on the best team series a few times before, as they're usually the best Fire options in a Kanto playthrough, where Charizard isn't involved. These two are version exclusives, which is the main reason we don't talk about them as much as we have before. But throwing that out of the window, we can talk about what makes them good. Ninetales is the better of the two when it comes to getting Fire attacks off, as it has a fantastic 100 base special stat. You'll be getting them off quickly too, with an equally impressive 100 base stat. It also really helps to have Confuse Ray to give more of a hard time to your opponent, but all of that is at the cost of having a more fragile Pokemon with his okay HP and defense. That's where Arcanine can shine, boasting a solid 90 HP stat and a slightly higher base 80 defense stat. Sure, it's not as fantastic in Ninetales, but 95 is still pretty dang close. The real impressive thing though is that 100 attack stat. That makes moves outside of its fire typing hit for great damage like Dig, Hyper Beam, and in later generations, Extreme Speed and Iron Tail. Now these two might not be the best fire type Pokemon period, but when it comes to Kanto, they have got goat status in my eyes. Jolteon is the next Pokemon we're talking about, and I'm sure to a lot of you, it was obvious why Jolteon would be here. Jolteon has been one of the best electric type Pokemon in this series as a whole, not just Kanto. It was even an OU all the way up until Black and White. Jolteon was really that good. In Gen 1, it had an amazing 110 special stat, coupled with 130 in speed. But even from Gen 2 onwards, that special defense was still a really solid 95. Jolteon's greatness has never come from its diversity in terms of what it can attack, but how hard it can hit with its electric type moves. It was the second fastest in Gen 1, just behind Electrode, but Electrode could never accomplish what Jolteon could do. Jolteon can get off those quick thunder waves, hit with a devastating thunderbolt, and can often get critical hits with moves like Double Kick and Pin Missile because of that speed stat. In later generations, at least as far as playthroughs were concerned, Jolteon kind of faded from relevancy, but Kanto feels as if it was made specifically for Jolteon to shine, and shine it does. We have yet another two-way tie between Pokemon that accomplish the same job, being Rhydon and Dugtrio. Now Dugtrio has appeared quite a couple times on Kanto Best Teams simply for this speed, because I, as well as many other people, appreciate being able to attack first when possible during the story. That's pretty much the only reason Rhydon was ever placed second to Dugtrio, but that doesn't mean Rhydon should be written off. So let's talk about why it's actually a pretty good choice to consider. 105 HP, 130 attack, and 120 defense. Yeah, that's a really bulky mon that can hit like a truck. As for moves, it gets access to Earthquake, Rock Slide, Body Slam, and even Seismic Toss. Rhydon is no joke and really is such a cool Pokemon. But of course, we have usually gone for Dugtrio, as its speed really is important. It might be frail and only have 80 attack, but having literally tripled the speed of Rhydon made it much more viable in my eyes. In addition to moves like Earthquake and Rock Slide, Dugtrio could also mess up the completion by raising its evasiveness with Double Team and hit a fair amount of crits with Slash. Putting that aside though, you really can't go wrong with either one of these Pokemon. They're both fairly powerful and will mess up your opponents with ease. Speaking of a Pokemon you can't really go wrong with, we have on here the best team for Kanto's MVP being Nidoking. 
I can keep this one short as most of you already know why Nido King is so good. But if you don't, let me explain. On the surface, it looks really average. None of its stats are inherently impressive. But the real magic of Nido King is in how early you can get him and the diverse move pool he has access to. Basically, you can have a fully evolved Pokemon by the time you walk out of Mount Moon, before you even obtain your second badge. That's just plain nuts. In addition to having a decently powerful Pokemon that early on, it can fill a lot of roles. Need a Surfer? It can do that. Ice Beam for those pesky Flying and Dragon types? No problem. Earthquake and Rock Slide as well? You betcha. Thunderbolt and Fire Blast too? Y'all see what I'm getting at. Nido King is good, plain and simple. It's a Kanto MVP for a reason, and I don't see that changing anytime soon. Hopefully this next entry isn't too long, but it is another two-way tie this time between Lapras and Starmie. I think between the two, Starmie is the better one, but Lapras isn't a bad second choice. For starters with Starmie, it's got that killer base 100 special attack and 115 speed, hitting fast and hard. You know the name of the game by now. Water and Psychic type is a powerful combination that should be feared by many. Access to Ice Beam, Thunderbolt, Psychic, and Surf. That's pretty insane coverage that you can't get on many other Pokemon. Lapras can produce similar results to a bit slower and more stally. It can use the same exact moveset, it just won't hit as hard or as quick. But Lapras can fortunately take a hit, as well as actually having Stab for Ice Beam, if you believe it's more important to be able to take larger chunks out of Flying, Grass, Ground, and Dragon types. Once again, the choice is yours, and there really are no wrong answers with these two. They do the same exact thing. One is just more bulky, while the other is a lot quicker and stronger. It's as simple as that in an in-game playthrough. Okay, okay, I swear this is the last time we're gonna have a two-way tie, but I had to do it yet again for these two normal-type titans, being Snorlax and Tauros. Now, Snorlax isn't really the MVP of the Kanto line of best teams, but I'd say overall, Snorlax has made the most appearances across the series as a whole, and even appeared in the best team for Sword and Shield, so that can really attest for it being a great Pokemon. 160 HP and 110 attack, that's pretty strong. Sure, in Gen 1, its defenses weren't amazing, but when going into Fire Red and Leaf Green, that special defense is up to 110, making it an even bigger pain to deal with. So you might think it would just stop there. It's just a big normal attacking wall, right? Wrong. Snorlax can get a fair amount of coverage moves, ranging from Earthquake, Ice Beam, Seismic Toss, and many others. Snorlax is just an indomitable force that transcends generations, so naturally it would be here. But a Pokemon I don't talk about too often would definitely have to be Tauros. In fact, I'm sure there are tons of people that can make the argument for Tauros being the better of the two as it reps a devastating base 100 attack stat and 110 speed stat. One difference is that slightly higher special attack stat, which really helps Tauros if using coverage moves like Ice Beam and Fire Blast. Even though up until this point, I've touted speed to be one of the biggest factors in a setting if a Pokemon will be on the best team or not, but Snorlax is the exception to that rule. Enormous bulk and attack paired with a diverse move pool absolutely trumps that, and is why I believe it edges out the likes of Tauros. But the point of this list is to talk about the best Pokemon in the Kanto region, and Tauros definitely deserves to be here too. Next, we have yet another best team member, but this one hasn't appeared as often as many of the others, and that Pokemon is Jinx. Jinx got seriously overlooked in a lot of the previous best teams, but finally made it once I smarted up a bit and really looked at how good it truly was. In Gen 1, it sported a solid 95 in its special stats and in its speed stat, but that special attack was bumped up to a nicer looking 115 once the special stat was split. But as with many of these Pokemon, the real magic comes from Jinx's move pull. Being an Ice and Psychic type, I'm pretty sure you can imagine the kind of excellent moves it has access to. Ice Beam, Psychic, you know, the works. But it has great support moves to go along with that. You have standard ones like Calm Mind, more situational ones like Water Pulse, and then the best one of them all, a move that has meant a lot to my channel over the years, we're of course talking about Lovely Kiff. It might sport less than preferred accuracy, but the option to straight up put an opponent's Pokemon to sleep is key on Jinx. As generations went on, Jinx became less and less good to the point where it wasn't even worth considering. But Red, Blue, Fire Red, and Leaf Green will always welcome Jinx with open arms. A Pokemon on this list that hasn't been on the best team? Well, I'm sure you're all the shocked at this. Here we have a Pokemon that might surprise you being Chansey. Chansey is definitely more of a competitive mon for sure, but it does have its own merits of being good in an in-game playthrough. I mean, if you thought Snorlax was a tank, then you haven't laid your eyes on Chansey. 250 HP and 105 in its special attack in Gen 1 made it unbelievably good. Not only could you take many hits, but you could hit back extremely hard. This was nerfed, of course, and its special attack went down to 35, but at the very least, in red, blue, and yellow, you could absolutely wreck the competition. You can get it right around the same time as you would typically get your Snorlax, if not just a little 
little later. And the best part is, you could reap similar benefits, just on the special side of things versus the physical. Ice Beam, Thunderbolt, Psychic, Fire Blast, and so on. I think the main reason why Chansey lost out the Snorlax is that Snorlax just worked better with other Pokemon on the team, whereas Chansey would kind of be doing its own thing, being predominantly a wall. I don't really know the best way to word it, so I'm hoping you all get what I mean. With that said, don't sleep on Chansey. It's an amazing option, especially in the Gen 1 games, and it's a Pokemon that's super worthy of being considered one of the best in Kanto. And lastly, we have a Pokemon that I'm sure you all saw coming. Yes, we of course had to bring up Alakazam as one of, if not the best Pokemon in Kanto. In Gen 1, the thing was broken. Psychic types are only weak to bug, were immune to poison, and were just very strong in general. There were plenty of fighting and poison Pokemon to take on in Kanto, but more than that, Psychic type was just good as only Psychic types resisted them. 120 speed and 135 for its special. Even when the special split came around, it maintained the 135 in its special attack and was given a respectable 85 for its special defense. Now it might not have the most diverse move pull in the world, but this Pokemon is the definition of utilizing what little it has to its advantage. Now of course you won't see this amazing Pokemon in any traditional best teams anymore, as you all don't seem to be fans of trade evolutions. But if you put that aside, Alakazam would definitely be a Pokemon you all would see very often. Well, that wraps up this list of the best Pokemon in the Kanto region. I mostly focus on the Generation 1 side of things, but I did try to take into account Fire Red and Leaf Green as they still are in Kanto. Let's Go, of course, is a little bit different. Just keep in mind that things were a lot different in Gen 1 and Generation 3, but the physical special split was more amongst us, and there were more moves to pick from. So when picking Arcanine, that might be your best option for Let's Go. But anyways, what'd you think of this list, though? Did you agree that the selection of Pokemon were the best Kanto has to offer, or do you think I overlooked some? Definitely let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, Video, why not leave a like and subscribe to my channel with notifications on, that way you never miss an upload. If you want to support me further, consider following my Twitch where I stream a lot of Pokemon content and all kinds of other Nintendo content like Zelda, Fire Emblem, and much more. Also, I've been reviewing every episode of My Hero Academia Season 4 over on Mystic Sage, so head over there if you're into that too. I would love that a lot. Want to support me further further in Game Call Perks? Check out my Patreon. Daniel Leone, Lady Crimson, Memory Martin, The Lazy Leo, Matthew Young, Awesome Lego, Jarrett Weez Austin, Sodden Grider, Nigma97, and Kermit117 did, and I wanted to thank them personally for going above and beyond. It means the world to me. I think I'm wrapped this up though. I'm Mr. Gumbrand and I will see you in the future for more awesome Pokemon content.